we have to desire smaller portions, not just put it on the plate. And to do that, to desire smaller portions, we really have to eat high nutrient, high volume foods, and we have to eat a lot of them. It has to be the majority of what you eat. So what foods are highest in nutrients? And what foods are highest in bulk and fiber and volume? What food, and here's an example of high volume foods. So let's categorize this into four categories. Raw vegetables, of course, lettuces, celery, cucumbers, snow peas, tomatoes. Raw vegetables are a critical necessity for excellent, excellent health. When you cook a raw vegetable or cook a vegetable, you lose about 35% of the isothiocyanides that you would have gleaned had you taken it in raw, in its raw form. You know, that's okay. I mean, cooked vegetables are still needed too because if we just ate all raw vegetables, we wouldn't get enough vegetables into us because we get f too filled up from them fast. And so what's wrong with a raw food diet for most people? Because some people can do okay on a raw food diet, but many people cannot because the raw vegetables take up so much bulk in their stomach and because they're not digested efficiently, that the majority of calories pass through you undigested because people don't chew well enough, that their caloric needs aren't met by raw vegetables enough and they have to eat too many fruits and too many nuts. So in proportionally, they're actually eating less vegetable nutrients by their diet being all raw than they would have had they included some cooked vegetables. You follow that? So even though you lose some nutrients by cooking a vegetable, you wind up getting in, you, you're able to get more vegetables in your diet, and vegetables become a higher proportion of your total caloric intake, increasing the nutrient density of your diet if you include cooked vegetables in your diet. So we had cooked vegetables we have, of course, and we can eat more cruciferous compounds. We couldn't, we couldn't eat, we can arugula and watercress and, and um, little kale raw, but it's hard to eat Brussels sprouts raw. It's hard to eat cabbage raw. Too. You can shred some cabbage on your sal salad, but it's hard to eat a lot of you know, um, collard greens raw. It's better to put it into a soup. And when you put that into a soup, any nutrient loss from the, from the water kind, from the water solubilizing the nutrients goes into the water and, that's, and you take it into the soup anyway. And you buy, so, it's very, so soups are a very healthy way to get nutrients. So let's go through this again. Raw vegetables, cooked greens, very important. The non-green vegetables, the ones that are low in, low in calories, like mushrooms, eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, cauliflower, and of course fresh fruits, these are the foods that are highest in nutrients. They have the highest nutrient per calorie quotients. Let's look at these numbers now. I know it's probably hard to read these. It's written very small. But let's look at the nutrient density now of various foods. Clearly, eating, you can eat a vegan diet, right? You can have a vegan diet of pasta, bread, and look where whole wheat bread is. It's not too much higher over white bread and white pasta. See that? Now on a scale of one to a thousand, look where rice and potato are, about 50, right? And, that's, and of course, carrots and green peppers and cabbage and artichokes and broccoli and asparagus and strawberries and blueberries and tomatoes and cherries are all, all those foods that are really healthy are above 100, right? The, here's the thing, fruits and vegetables are between 100 and 1,000, and almost everything else is below 100. You got that? Now, how many of you eat the majority of your caloric intake above the 100-point line? 